Hey, this is Melody with We Swap, and I'm here to give you a few general tagging tips. The first thing you need to do is decide if you want to use index cards for your tags or if you want to print them from your computer. If you print them from your computer, they will come six to a page and they need to be printed on white cardstock. Then you just cut these out and then you have individual tags. One thing that I like to do for my printed tags is I have this little carrier here that I bought at Walmart with some dividers inside for each of the prices. So this way I can always have tags printed and I can grab whatever price that I need. If you decide to do your tags on a computer, they will already have the barcodes on them, as you can see here. And if you decide to do your tags on index cards, you will need barcodes and we provide those for you free of charge. They look like this. They will have your consigner number, your price, and then they will have a discount or no discount. So you see right here, this says no DISC for no discount. And then the ones that don't say anything beside the price, those will be discounted. You get to choose whether you want to discount your tags or not. If you're bringing a big item to our sale, this would be something like a car seat, a stroller, a piece of furniture, or a heavy toy. We're going to attach what we call a big ticket tag to your regular tag. So you go ahead and make a tag or print a tag for the item that you have. And then when you come to the sale, we're going to attach this big ticket tag fill out all the information just like is on your tag. We'll attach these two together and then when it's time for shopping, the person can remove the tag by tearing where it says tear here and they're only having to carry around the tag and not the heavy item. This part would still be attached to the tag, I mean to the item and they would be carrying around this part. So I'm gonna give you a few examples of some clothing. Here's the first one. This is two shirts together. So you're gonna put the first shirt on the hanger and you're going to pin the second shirt to the back. So we're not gonna pin anything at the neck because that pulls the, the shirt down like this. We're gonna pin it through the hanger and through the shirt. And then we've got our tag here. We've got our, bar cut, our safety pin going left and right. We have our hanger shaped like a question mark. We have a green dot on the item if we know we're not coming back to get this item. So this means this will not be available for you at pickup if it doesn't sell. The second thing I'll show you is just a regular shirt on a hanger. Looks easy, but we have a problem. This can easily fall off the hanger. So we need to take a safety pin and put it through the shoulder of the shirt and through the top of the hanger. That way, if it gets pulled, it's still on here. Now, we could put two safety pins in here and that would actually be wonderful. I highly recommend that, but please at least put one on the things that are gonna fall off. Another solution for this particular shirt, since it's a smaller size, is just to put it on a bigger hanger. We do not like the plastic hangers, the toddler size hangers. Um, the plastic toddler hangers, they break so easily and things fall off of them and hit the floor constantly. Now this shirt is on a bigger hanger, so it's really okay. It can be pulled off, but you have to pull pretty hard. So this one is okay without a safety pin. You don't have to safety pin things unless they are needed. This is an example of a shirt with a pair of shorts. Same we go for a shirt with a pair of pants. Put the shirt on the hanger, button the shirt, turn the, turn the shirt around, and we're gonna put the shorts facing out where you can see the front, button the shorts, pin it through the hanger and through the shirt. This way they're on there really good, it's not gonna fall off. And then the last example is a pair of pants. We have buttoned the pants, we have put the safety pin through the front and the back of the pants, and we've pinned it to the top of the hanger. Please don't pin it to the bottom of the hanger, it slides around, but when you pin it to the top of the hanger, it kind of stays where it's supposed to. Now I have a few examples of toys and shoes. I'll start with the shoes. This is a pair of flip flops, and I've got those zip tied together. Zip ties are a great thing to have handy. I'm even gonna pull this one a little tighter just to get it to stay a little more. Zip ties, um, string, yarn, uh, ribbon, something like that. And then we're going to take our safety pin and we're gonna put it through these top two holes. You see those holes? That's where the safety pin is supposed to go. Safety pin goes from left to right. That way it's through the tag twice. And we're gonna pin it through that zip tie. And this particular pair of flip flops has a green dot on it, which means they know they're not coming back to pick it up. So it won't be there at pickup if it doesn't sell. Now we've got the tag pinned on there and the flip flops are gonna stay together. Very good. Zip ties are great. Shrink wrap is another great thing to have handy. And packing tape. We need packing tape, not scotch tape. Packing tape is highly preferred. Okay, so 
So here are a couple more toys. Anything that you're putting in a Ziploc bag, we want the Ziploc bag to be taped shut. We want the tag taped onto the outside of the bag, not the inside because it gets turned around. Um, sometimes our scanners won't scan through it. So tape the bag closed, tape the tag to the outside of the bag. This is an example of a game. I've got a zip tie through this and then I have the um, tag is punched with the scissors so that that will stay together well. Here's an example of using shrink wrap. There's a ball in here, so this is completely shrink wrapped so that the ball will not get separated from the glove. Here's a game. We've got the game taped closed so that curious minds don't open that up and try to get inside. And we've got the tag taped to the back. And then books. You can either, if it's a single book and you just wanna tape the tag to the book, as long as it won't tear up the book, that's a great idea. I've got two books in a Ziploc bag and we've got the tag taped to the outside and we have the bag taped closed. Another thing you wanna think about is very descriptive tags. So when you are writing your descriptions on your tags, be as descriptive as you can. Make sure if there's two books in there, you say there's two books. Give us part of the title so that if these books were to get separated, we know what goes back together. If you have good descriptive tags, even if your item and your tag get separated, most likely we can put them back together. But if you put green shirt and we have three green shirts that don't have a tag, then it's gonna be really hard for us to figure out what goes together. And then if you have something like this in a box, you can just tape the tag to the box. Just make sure that you're taping the bags closed. We sell hangers and safety pins year round. We do a Florence porch pickup. So please message us anytime you need good hangers, wire hangers, and you need good safety pins. Please do not use plastic hangers if you can avoid it. And please do not use flimsy safety pins because they do not hold up. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and always feel free to ask us if you have any questions.